Hello, welcome back to another episode in CSC 263 Database Management Systems. Today we're transitioning um, away from SQL um, and into the internals of database management systems. And in particular, um, for the next couple of videos, we'll be talking about data security and database security. The materials we're talking about are in part covered in chapter 20 of the book. So before we can start talking about database security in more detail, we have to understand why the database is a target for attackers. Um, and in some um, easy way, you might say that you know, a hacker is after data, data is kept in a database, and therefore the database is the target of a hacker. And in many cases, that is exactly dead on the reason why. Many cyber attacks go after data that is stored on systems and that data is in most cases stored in database management systems. Keep in mind that um, much of that data that um, hackers go after is also stored outside the database management system. Um, for example, as I'm recording this video, Intel uh, just announced that um, many gigabytes worth of data and um, internal confidential documentation design documents about their chips and their microprocessors, um, specifications, and all kinds of documentation that um, is in the form of PDFs and PowerPoints and other document formats was breached. That's typically not the data we find in the database. The database typically has more transactional data. Doesn't mean it's not valuable, um, but it does mean that um, it's not just the database that an attacker is looking for. So what we're looking for um, is data, um, and specifically the DBMS, one of its functions, because it allows for concurrent network access uh, to the data, the DBMS should also have some form of protections in place that makes sure that only authorized access takes place. And so in terms of security and data security, uh, it's all about authorization. We want to make sure that only authorized people or authorized subjects have authorized access to data. And when we break that down, and especially when it comes to protecting data, we can break it down in three main categories. The first one would be confidentiality. The name is self-descriptive almost. Um, it means that only authorized subjects should be able to view authorized data. In the terms of uh, SQL databases, it would mean that we only want uh, people who are specifically given the right to um, run select queries against data be able to do so. In other words, if I connect to a database management system and the database management system does not know who I am or um, I don't have access to a database, it should not let me run these queries. So that is a job for the DBMS. We also want to make sure that the integrity of the data is maintained. We've talked about integrity a lot. It means that the data in the database is correct. In terms of security, we often mean by data integrity that only authorized people can make authorized changes. While the DBMS will ensure things like entity integrity, domain integrity, referential integrity, and all of that, as long as an authorized person authorizes a change or institutes a change, the DBMS is okay with that, but it might not be okay from a security perspective. So we want to make sure that um, we have some way to specify who can change data and who cannot. And then lastly is availability. Um, we talked about the DBMS providing persistence of data. We want to make sure that data is available. Availability is a big one. We are coming right out of the storm I say us um, when I'm recording this. And I am now going on three or four days without any form of internet connectivity. Um, availability is a big one. So when we look at this, um, we see that cybersecurity um, in general, but in this case, data security um, in particular, is defined by these three um, concepts, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Together, we call it the CIA triad. Now, security is not a binary thing, one or zero. Um, you know, things can go wrong, um, um, but some things are more likely to go wrong. Um, some things, if they go wrong, are not that important, um, while others might be. And so when we're talking about risk, um, specifically risk to security, we're typically talking about um, two dimensions, likelihood and impact. 
the more likely that something goes wrong, the more the risk is. The more uh, damage would be done if it goes wrong, the more the impact is. And risk is the combination of two. It's the combination of likelihood and impact. Um, and so we want to take steps to reduce the likelihood or to reduce the impact or maybe both that an adverse event is going to happen and that we are going to be negatively affected by something. And the steps that we take, um, those are called controls. And so we have to think about what controls can the database management system provide to us. Before we can start identifying what those controls are, we have to figure out you know, what are these root causes of, of these issues that we need to protect against. In some cases, it's just poorly written software. Um, so we have to make sure that when we write software and when we write queries, that we do this correctly. Um, and when one of the videos, uh, I think it's like the third video from now, um, we'll talk about application security. How can we write software correctly? Um, so that the risk of um, vulnerabilities in that code is diminished. The other thing is that we could have inconf incorrectly configured systems, which means that you know, it's one thing to configure a database, but if you don't put usernames and passwords on it, it doesn't mean a whole lot. You can just assume someone else's functionality. So you want to make sure that things are configured correctly. And of course, we want to be able to protect against human error. We want to make sure that if someone accidentally types drop from table, that there is some form of a safeguard that stops us from losing everything we have. So if we start looking at what we can do to prevent that, um, there's basically a number of main categories. One is authentication. We always have to know who is interacting with our systems at all times. Two is access control. Once we know who we are dealing with, we have to be able to tell them what they are authorized to do and what they are not authorized to do, and the DBMS should enforce that. We could use cryptography to obscure the meaning of data, which means that even if someone gets unauthorized access to the database, they wouldn't be able to assert any meaning to the data in there. And lastly is audit. Audit doesn't really prevent something, but it does help you find out what happened or maybe that something happened. Between these four, authentication, access control, cryptography and audit, we have the main um, controls that database management systems can be used to protect their data. In the next video, we'll talk about authentication and access control. The one after that uh, will address cryptography. And then lastly, we'll apply, address um, application and network security as it relates to database management systems.